Grace Block 2 students. It's my privilege to bring the devotional for this block. So today I want to talk to you about Psalm 100, and I'm going to give a title to my message, Worship 101. We're just going to take a look at some of the basics that we need to know about worship. Well, let me begin with the story. I have a friend named Clark. Clark is one of those guys that's good at everything. Now, I know you're thinking, no one is good at everything. Clark is good at everything. Let me illustrate what I mean. Back in our high school days, uh, he played on offense and defense. He punted. He returned punts and kickoffs. Uh, in basketball, he was a starter in basketball. Uh, in baseball, he was the best pitcher in the league. He was also the best hitter in the league and won the home run championship. He had the best batting average in the league. Uh, he could play any position in baseball, but his real sport was track. Uh, he was the state champion in the 400-meter dash. After high school, he ran track at the University of Arkansas. He ran the 400, the 800, and threw the javelin. He actually held the Razorback record in the javelin for around 30 years. Well, let's go back to high school. He was most handsome. He was voted best all around. He was voted senior class favorite. He had the lead role in the class play. Uh, I mean, I could go on and on. He was truly an amazing man. And of course, he was a great Christian. I hear from him regularly. What a great encourager he is. And by the way, he's a great witness for Christ. He witnessed to me on the day that I was saved. Well, I want to use Clark as an illustration because I know, just like you, everyone, uh, no one can be good at everything. So we have to choose what we want to be good at. That brings me to the author of Psalm 100. We don't know his name. He did not sign his name to this uh, passage of scripture. But I do want you to see something he was good at, and that was worship. And by the way, if you and I have to choose what we're going to be good at, I can't think of anything that we should rather be good at than worship. That's the most important thing in life. God created man to know him. God wants us to glorify him. And so worship is absolutely critical. Consider the first of the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods before me. Consider the second commandment. You shall uh, not make unto you any graven image or bow down to it and worship it. Consider the third of the Ten Commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. You see, God wants us to know him and honor him. And that's exactly what we see in Psalm 100. So here are some basics about worship. Let me mention two of these. First of all, I want you to see how we should worship God. And this author gives us three insights in these verses. First of all, we notice that the spirit of our worship must be joy. Listen to what he wrote. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. You see joy in the first two verses. Our worship should be constituted by joyful shouting and joyful serving and joyful singing. You see, the spirit of our worship is joy. Knowing God should bring joy to your life. Joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. And so joy should permeate every aspect of our worship. Let's notice something else. We should worship God with joy, but then notice the focus of our worship must be God. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. The word know here means that we are to acknowledge that the Lord is God. By the way, notice capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. 
is found four times in this psalm. Now, God wants us to clearly understand which God we need to be worshiping. We need to be worshiping I am that I am. He is the true and living God, and there are no others. So we should acknowledge that God is the Lord. We should acknowledge that he's the creator. We owe our existence to him. What a great reason to worship. And notice something else. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Well, we belong to God by virtue of creation, but we also belong to him by virtue of redemption. He brings us into his family or into his flock. So you can have a relationship with God. Now, I want you to think about that. The true and living God, I mean, the holy God makes it possible for sinful man to know him personally and have a relationship with him. That's absolutely mind-blowing. What a great privilege to know the creator of the universe, the eternal God. Uh, he can be the God of your salvation. So believe on him. Let him bring you into his family or into his flock. We need to focus on God. That's the focus of our worship. But then let's notice something else. The essence of our worship should be praise and thanksgiving. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Now, praise is just simply honoring God. It's expressing our adoration, our awe of God and all that he is. Jesus taught the Samaritan woman that true worshipers should worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Worship should be spiritual. It's not just merely going through a routine. It's your spirit responding to God's spirit. We're to worship him in truth. That means we are to worship God as he has revealed himself in scripture. We are to acknowledge and admire God and express that in our praise and singing and worship. Notice we are to be thankful. We ought to be grateful for all that God has done for us. Scripture tells us uh, that we are to be thankful unto him because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now, God has given us all that we have. He's made us all that we are. Uh, the Bible tells us every good and perfect gift is from above. So God's certainly given us plenty of reasons to worship him. Well, notice how to worship God. We should worship him joyfully. We should worship focused on him and not the trappings of worship. And then we should worship him by expressing praise and adoration and gratitude to him. But the psalmist doesn't stop there. He also talks about why we should worship the Lord. Now, he gives us three reasons in the last verse of this psalm. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Let me give you, now, by the way, there are as many reasons to worship God as there are grains of sand on the seashores of every part of the globe. But he mentions three, and these are certainly worthy of our consideration. We should worship God because he is good. Now, when we say God is good, I mean, he's really good. Uh, the Bible tells us that he's holy. He's without sin. In fact, it's in, impossible for God to sin. God is so good, he can be nothing but good. He's certainly worthy of our worship. Notice also, his mercy is everlasting. Now, mercy is God not giving us what we deserve. God is full of mercy. His mercy is greater than our sin. That's a reason to give him praise. But notice something. His mercy is everlasting. God will never run out of mercy. And God will never change his mind and withhold his mercy from us. So God is good and he is merciful, and that's why we should worship him. And his truth endures to all generations. 
What's true about God in this generation will be true about God in this generation, in this generation, in this generation. In other words, God will never change. He will always be what he has always been, which means he will always be worthy of worship. God has given us plenty of reasons to worship him. So I want you to understand the issue when it comes to worship is not God's worthiness. He's absolutely worthy. That's why the psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. He also said, my mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord from this time forth, even forevermore. The Bible tells us great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and his greatness is unsearchable. None of us will ever be able to fully fathom all that God is. He's worthy of our worship. That's not the issue. The issue is not his worthiness, but our willingness. Are you willing to worship God as he wants you to worship him, to worship him joyfully, to, to focus your worship on him alone and to praise him and thank him as he deserves and desires? Are you willing to acknowledge that he's good and that he's merciful and that he is immutable? He will never change in even the slightest degree. Our God is perfect. He always has been and he always will be. I hope that you will learn to worship him with all your heart and do that the remainder of your life and for all eternity. Let's pray. Father, thank you for being such an awesome God. Thank you for revealing the truth about yourself to us. Thank you for helping us understand the kind of worship that pleases and honors you. And I pray that you would help us to trust Christ for salvation and be devoted followers of the Lord Jesus Christ all the days of our life and help us to become passionate worshipers that glorify you each and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you guys have a, a great rest of this block. Thank you, guys.